Okay, so we're in 5.2. We're going to talk about the complex plane. So what we mean is, we're going to, so we've been doing these complex numbers. Complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. And so we, what we want to do with this now is we want to put these complex numbers on an axis system, a made-up axis system, where we put the real numbers on the x-axis and the imaginary numbers on the y-axis. We're going to have an x-axis and a y-axis. The x is the real and the y is the imaginary. So, for example, they're going to say, let's take 3 plus 4i and put it on the axis system. This making sense? 3 plus 4i. So where is 3 plus 4i? How do we put that on an axis system? 3 plus 4i. Yeah. So you just go right 3, up 4. There's the dot. 3 plus 4. 3, and this is 4i. 3i, 2i, 1i, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, is this making sense? So the vertical axis is the imagine. So here, Bernadette, here's what I was talking about. Are you excited about this? This is a pain, isn't it? Bernadette is totally right. This is bad notation. This is a pain. Because normally we're used to, we just came out of vectors. I mean, we're talking like yesterday. We took a test on vectors, never long in the summer. And um, in a week from tomorrow, we have a final on all of it. And um, we learned that I was always sideways for vectors. I is sideways, J is up, huh? They just made it that way. I is sideways, J is up for the vectors. Now, all of a sudden, they're putting I on the vertical for on this new thing called the complex plane. And they're putting the real number part sideways. So if you want to locate a, um, a, a complex number like 3 plus 4i, you go right 3, up 4, and there you are, 3 plus 4i. So you've got to remember now, if you're doing a complex number, the i is up down. The real is sideways. If you're doing a vector, i is sideways, j is up down. Yeah. Yeah, I is in the place of J, basically. Yeah. But you can write it the other way, too. You could, but it's typically written this way. But yeah, you see, either way you write it, you still got to remember the I's up down, so where it used to be sideways. The best way to differentiate two from the other one is there's no J. There is no J. That helps. There is no J. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, sorry. They are, these two different worlds don't really care that each other uses I differently. So these are two different worlds, and we're putting them together on one final exam next Thursday. So I and J for vectors. I is sideways, J is up down. Complex numbers, real is sideways, and the vertical is up down. So let's put a couple more. Where would we put um, 2 minus I? Could you find on the complex plane the imaginary, the, uh, the complex number 2 minus I? Yeah, so 2 to the right, so down 1i, 2 to the right, right there. 2 minus, everybody good? Right 2 down 1? Because there's really an invisible understood 1 in front of that i. So right 2 down 1. Everybody track with me. From the origin, right 2 down 1. Right 2 down 1. So the first number is sideways. The real number is sideways. The imaginary is up down. So they're just wanting a way to picture these complex numbers. So they made this thing called the complex plane. So they can picture complex numbers. So how about if we had minus 3 minus 2i? Can you find that one? Find that one on the complex plane.
minus 3 minus 2i. So it's back 3 down 2, isn't it? So back 3 down 2 right there. That would be the complex number minus 3 minus 2i. What if they said, hey, find the complex number just minus 4i? Can you find that one? Yeah, straight down 4, huh? There's no real part. So it's just straight down 4, boom, right there, minus 4i. We good on finding dots on the complex plane? Now, one other thing they're going to ask us for. So they're going to say, find dots on the complex plane. And then they're going to say, find the absolute value of the, the complex number. That's kind of weird. Let's think about absolute value for a minute. You guys know absolute value, right? What's the absolute value of negative 3? 3. What's the absolute value of positive 3? It's also 3. So if this is 0, here's negative 3, here's positive 3, what is absolute value? Distance from zero, isn't it? That's what absolute value is. Absolute value, remember, all of math is made up. Absolute values were made up. Why were they made up? To describe things in the real world where we never say negative. Where in the real world do we never say negative? Because that's what absolute values are. Always positive. When we talk about distance. When we talk about distance. Nobody, if I go down to L.A., I don't say I'm going to go negative 200 miles because it's south. It'd be nice to roll back to, to go south and roll back your Right. You're right. Negative <laughs> mileage. That's right. The car got younger. Yeah. Yeah. No. So we don't do that, do we? We don't. We don't say it's negative distance going south or west or whatever. Distance is just always positive. So remember math. What they did? They just came along and made up stuff to help us do the real life stuff we do. So they just said, okay. Everybody talks about distance, and they always just give a positive answer. They never give a negative. And so. We need to make up something that always gives a positive answer. Absolute value. So they just made up absolute value. So what? So let's be clear what absolute value is. The absolute value of x or whatever is the distance. It's distance, huh? From 0 to x, isn't it? It's the distance from 0 to x. That's why the absolute value of negative. I, I know you think of it as, well, it's just positive. But really, it's the distance. That's why it's just positive. It's the distance. So if you're at negative 7, how far are you from 0? Well, you're 7 away, aren't you? So absolute value means distance from 0. Let's go back then. So with that in mind, let's come back up here. Let's get rid of these other examples. And we'll just deal with the main first one I gave you. And we'll say, okay, what's the absolute value... What's the absolute value of 3 plus 4i? 3 plus 4? Yeah. What's the absolute? Now, no, no, stay with me. Were, were you catching the definition? So give it to me in terms of definition. This will check for listening comprehension. I just said the definition of absolute value. It's the distance from 0. So distance from 0. So it's the height. Yes. Right? What did I just say right here? What is the absolute value of anything? Distance from zero. That's what absolute value means. When you put bars on something, you're saying distance from zero. That's what you're saying. So when I put bars on these, it's, it's sitting right here. I'm saying distance from zero. Where is zero? Right here. So I'm saying this distance, huh? Want the yeah. Does everybody see that? That's the same definition, isn't it? Distance from zero. So we're going to be busting up the union circle on these two? Well, we don't need to do unit circle. That's just going to be a hypotenuse for a right triangle. That's going to be the same thing as magnitude of a vector. Square root of a squared plus b squared. It's Pythagorean. Yeah. Everybody see that? It's Yeah, it's Pythagorean. Right? Does everybody see that? See how it's the same thing? Is that good? So if that's just the hypotenuse of the right triangle, isn't it? In other words, this is over 3, up 4. 
So it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. What is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared? 9 plus 16. Square root of 25, 5. You know that one, 3, 4, 5 triangle, huh? Does that make sense? So absolute value means distance from 0. And distance from 0 is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Just like a vector. It's the same thing as magnitude of a vector. The length of the hypotenuse, it's C, right? A squared plus B squared is C squared. It's just going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. Yeah, pretty dead. No, no, it's just distance, right? So this is how far over? Three. This is how far up? Four. Yeah, even though it's I because it's going up, its distance is still four. Yeah, so we're talking distance. So distance doesn't include any other funny stuff that comes with it. It's just how far from point to point. Does that make sense on that? Absolute value is distance from zero. Distance from zero. So... This is number two. They want the absolute value of 6 plus 7i. So this is over 6, up 7. So that's over 6, up 7. We got this dot 6 plus 7i. So I want to know the distance. The distance is the absolute value. Distance from 0. Absolute value is distance from 0. So how do I do it? Pythag, right? It, it's, it's C. A squared plus B squared is C squared. So it's the root of A squared plus B squared. It's the square root of 6 squared plus 7 squared. Square root of 36 plus 49. What is that? Um, 85? Square root of 85? So there's a big one, like you're saying, Clarence. Yeah, so whenever you get a big old root like that, you try to simplify it. You try to use your calculator. What goes in 85? What do you know for sure goes in? Five. Five. For sure five. Divide by five and you calculate, I think it's 17, isn't it? Yeah, 17. Now, 17 doesn't break down, so this one's done. It doesn't break down any further. So you just break it down. If you find two of the same thing, you ship one out. Remember that from algebra, how you simplify roots? Just break them down. and We'll get one in a minute that simplifies a little bit more. But on the test, it wouldn't be like crazy. It would be like that. Like, like, yep. Okay. Good there. Is that all making sense? Well, I got no, well, just looking forward. You know how, like, usually in every chapter we do, we reverse it backwards. Will there be a way to reverse that backwards? Like, to get 6 plus 70. Well, actually, yeah, we will go forward and backwards in this stuff. You're right. We will. All right, so number four, you guys caught up with me? If you're working on some homework, you probably want to dial in with this right here. This is going to be different. We're entering a whole new world. Did you want to enter a new world again? Here we are. We're going to change the way we do. We're going to change the way, the system, the method that we locate complex numbers. And it's funny, we, we just learned it. We just got it. And now we're going, to, we're going to say we want another way. So here's the other way. Let me, in fact, let me just, just get a blank screen and show you. So suppose you had the complex number. Complex number 3 plus 4i. You can find that, right, on the complex plane? Let's find that one on the complex plane. Can you find the dot? So it would be, starting from the origin, to be over 3, up 4. Right there. Right? Over, over 3, this is 3 plus 4, meaning it's over 3, it's up 4. There it is. That's, that's one way of finding that dot. We would like, basically, here's the deal. Um, by the end of this very section, which is not long, it's tomorrow. By tomorrow, at the end of this section, we'll be doing things like taking 3 plus 4i to the 10th power. Now, that seems kind of crazy, doesn't it? You imagine all the work and writing out 10 of those, right? 3 plus 4i. 3 plus 4i, 3 plus 4i, 3 plus 4i, just keep going, da, da, da. And then foil, 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 foil. It'd be crazy, wouldn't it? All the work involved. 
we're going to learn using De Moivre's theorem. He's the one that's the title of the section. A way to do that one step, right to the answer. If we represent these things in this other system. That's why we're changing systems right now. Because that would be a terrible question in this system. But there's a way to shift the system and make it a super easy question. So that's the reason why we're going to represent things in a different way. So here's the way. To find that dot, I'm going to, like, let me do a military kind of comparison. I think it's an easy way to think about it. It's just how I think anyway with it. Like a cannon here. If I say, okay, if the military is saying we want to locate this spot, we could go right three up four. Right three up four. Or, or we, could, we could turn to face it and shoot out the distance to the dot. That's the other system. So the other system is, so the first system that you're used to right now, 3 plus 4i, is go right and go up. The other system is turn to face it and shoot the distance. In other words, find the angle. This is 0 degrees here, right? So the cannon starts pointing at 0 degrees. Say you want to land artillery at that spot. There'd be two ways to locate that spot. If you were the radio man calling, we need artillery... We need to shoot that spot, right three, up four. That's one way to do it. That's called rectangular coordinates because you're going right and up. They make a little rectangle, don't they? That's called the rectangular system. The other system called the polar system, which we're going to do right now, is you just turn, you find out what angle, what angle you need to aim at, and then how far you need to shoot. That's the other system. Angle and distance instead of right and up which is exactly what we did for vectors. Remember? Vectors, we had magnitude and angle, and sometimes we changed them to right and up, which we called I and J. Now we're just calling it real and imaginary, whatever. It's still right and up, and we want angle and distance. That's the same thing. It's the other way of doing it. You, you with me on that? So remember how we figured this out? How do we find, how do we find this distance down here they call this, they're going to call this R. For, it means for radial distance. It's like a radius of a circle, whatever. So they're calling it R. That distance R, they're going to call that R. Could we figure that out? What is R there? It's the, it's the hypotenuse of the triangle. It's the magnitude of the vector. So it's the C. It's, it's A squared plus B squared is C squared. It's C. So it's square root of... 3 squared plus 4 squared, square root of 9 plus 16, R is 5, right? Square root of 25, R is 5. Good so far? So R is 5. That's the radial distance. Now, how do you figure out the angle? What's the angle there? How do we figure out the angle? Yeah, how would you figure out the angle? Inverse tangent, right? For the vector stuff? It's the same thing. So that angle is going to be inverse tangent. Remember how we wrote it for the vectors? J over, I. J over I. For the vectors, we wrote J over No, we don't have J and I here, do we? But whatever you want to call it, J and I, whatever, it's the, the height over that one, isn't it? You with me? Now, we're going to say it a different way here. They're going to say this is A and this is B. They just keep making up different letters for things. <laughs> but it's the same stuff. How are we doing? Are you guys getting tired of them changing the game on you? All right, this will be nice. It'll actually be the same thing. I think you'll fly through it. It'll be the same thing. So you find the angle by the inverse tangent of this over this. Right? Do you have to? No, there's other ways. I think I. Yeah, I'd really encourage you, Jose, just to stay with tangent. We're going to do a whole bunch of these. You'll do much better if you just tangent, tangent, tangent every time. There are other ways, of course. But I think you'll tend to get confused if you. Cause, because it's a little tricky. Because you've got to worry about reference angles, all kinds of things. It'll be a little different for sine and cosine. I'm not going to teach you any of that. So, um, so I'd encourage you just to stick with tangent. So, 
So what was it for the vector again? It was inverse tangent of j over i. Well, now we're just going to call it same thing. j was the up. What's the up? It's the b over a. j over i, b over a, whatever. Same thing. It's the one that goes up over the one that goes sideways because that's opposite over adjacent. That's toa, tangent. Right? You with me? See how that's the same thing? And again, this is going to be in degrees, right? Yeah, degrees. They want degrees. That's right. So theta is going to be inverse tangent of b over a. What's b? 4. What's a? 3. 4 thirds. Hit the inverse tangent button on your calculator. What are we going to get? I'm getting 53.1 degrees. So that's the angle. That's the angle. Yeah? So after, well, the first thing it said was 3 plus 4i. After, like, putting the triangle where it is, like 3.4i. Right. Is it better to just, like, forget 3.4i? And then after that, just do it in terms of, like, i and j? Yeah, like, sure. Whatever works for you. Because i would be right and up, technically, unless we forgot the... So do whatever works for you. Okay. But, um, but it's inverse tangent of the one that goes up, whether you call it B or call it J, over the one that goes sideways. It's the same thing as vectors. Okay. It'll work exactly the same, whatever you want to call it, whatever is the easiest way for you to think of it. So that makes sense? So remember, so, we're, so there's two ways now, and there were two ways with vectors, two ways that you could specify this particular dot right here. Two ways, huh? You could say it's over 3, up 4. That's rectangular coordinates because you're moving like a rectangle. You're making a box. Or you could say turn, turn the cannon to face 53.1 degrees and shoot a distance of 5. This is a distance of 5 there from the origin to there, huh? And you're going to land on the same dot. This dot can be called 3 plus 4i or it can be called 5 comma 53.1 degrees. That's another way, another system to notate the same dot, just like we did for vectors. Remember, for vectors, we had magnitude and angle, or we changed it to ij. One and uno, uno and one, back and forth. Same thing here. There's just two different ways to say that dot. You can say over three, up four, or you can say shoot out five at an angle 53.1 degrees. It's a distance five at an angle 53.1 degrees. Okay, now remember how, since it's the same as vectors, and we already know vectors, let's just remember what we learned about vectors. What did we learn about how to change from ij back to, um, to r theta? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, how do, how do you find the i? What was the i always? It was the magnitude cosine, remember? So I would take the, what's the magnitude? Five, that's the length. Five cosine of the angle, what's the angle? 53.1. Right, that would be I, and then five sine of 53.1, J. Isn't that how we, how we did it before? It was like yesterday. It feels like yesterday, it was yesterday. We had a test on that yesterday, right? You with me? That's what we did yesterday. We said, look, it's just, it's just magnitude times cosine of the angle I plus magnitude times sine of the angle T. Well, now, that was yesterday, but today's today. We're no longer doing vectors. Right, Bernadette? So instead of I and J, what's it going to be? Yeah, they're the, where does the I go, in other words? Only on the second, because now we're doing a complex number, not a vector, but it's basically the same thing. There's just no, the I goes in the second one, there's no J at all. It's real and imaginary. You with me on that? And they're going to want you, for whatever reason, I have no idea why, to factor out the 5. They're going to say, hey, just factor out the 5. Which we can do, it's not, that, not hard. But they're just going to want you to do it. And that's what they're going to want you to write. That's called polar form. These are now polar coordinates. Polar coordinates mean an angle and a distance, like a magnitude and an angle for vectors. Same thing. That's called polar forms. Everybody see what I did? I just factored that 5 out. 
That five could go back and go back, right? Could distribute back. They just they want you to factor it out for whatever reason. There we go. It's just what we did with vectors. Let's let's try it on. Okay, so let's try it on this, and they're giving us minus 19, minus 19i. So remember what we do. We first off we find the the r, which is the length. How do we find the R? Magnitude. magnitude? Right. This is exactly mad. They're just calling it R now. But it's magnitude. It's the length. It's the same thing. So what do we do? Put that. Squared. A squared plus B squared, right? So crank that out and you have I think you'll find this really easy and what's nice is it'll reinforce what we did for vectors. And so I think it'll really actually help. And when you take the final in a week, you'll be nails on the vectors and the complex numbers because they're the same thing. They're basically the same thing just with a different, couple different naming schemes. So minus 19 squared plus minus 19 squared. Isn't that like, um, is it 361? No. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It is? 19 squared is 361? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So 361 plus 361, what is that? 722? 722. So Clarence, here's the root you were hoping for. We gotta simplify that thing. Well, it's got to. In fact, it's 19 root 2. Does your calculator do it, Manvir? Or did you just do it by hand? Oh no, I just divided by two Did yours do it all the way? I bet it won't do this. What I found in the other class is the nice HP Casio, Casio I mean the Casio ones, they won't do one this big. So we're going to have to do it by hand. All right, so let's, we have to simplify this root. When I look at 722, I just instantly know everything about it. All the little factors. No, not at all. I don't know. I'm just joking around. When I, so I, I'm with you. When I look at 722, I just, nice. Yours does it. The TI is superior to the Casio. You guys have, you have the Casio natural display? Anybody have the Casio? Well, I'm always... I'm always touting the greatness of the Casio natural display. But, uh, oh, yours is doing it too. Well, what was with that other person today? Theirs was not doing it at all. Oh, like you have a setting for some book? Yeah. Um, you, you press second. You press the shift in mode, and then complex is like number one. Oh, really? I don't think my phone's on four. Yeah, I think it'll do it even without it. Yeah, I think. Too nice. Okay. I don't know why the other person's calculator was broken. You guys are doing just fine. <laughs> do you know how it works with the TIs? No, it can't do it with these big ones. Even, even though these are bigger and more expensive, they won't do it. Was it giving a yeah. decimal or something? My daughter knew that, so she would, she would take the test when she took these classes. Pre -calc -calc. She would always bring both with, with her because this one does some nice things, but those other little ones do some of these things nicer. But yeah. does it give a decimal point or something, or does it just give you an error? Just decimal. Yeah, it just because does a decimal. If, if I can switch to the decimal. I know. Yours does both. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So, 722. So, for, for many people, i got to show by hand. So, how would you do it by hand if you didn't have one of these nice calculators? So, you look at it and you go, I know 2 goes in, right? You don't have to know everything in the world about 722, but we all know 2 goes in because it ends with a 2, huh? So, divide by 2 on your calculator and you'll get 361. And then you look at 361, and you go, oh, that's where I got the 19 from. That's 19 squared, so that's got to be 19 times 19. And then you go, oh, two 19s in? One 19 out, root 2. So we can all get that, whether our calculator does the tricks or not. Does everybody see that? See what I did there? So I broke that down. I divided by 2. And then I looked at 361 and remembered that was 19 squared, so that's 19 times 19. And you know the deal with roots. You remember from algebra? It's a two-for-one deal. Like you're going to Target, things are on sale two-for-one. You know what that means? Two 19s in, one 19 out. 19 root 2. Okay, so we get 19 root 2. So that's the magnitude or length, whatever they want to call it. That's the R. Now they're calling it R. So now, how do we go to find, what, what else do we need now? 
We're changing from IJ. This is basically IJ, isn't it? This is the same as IJ, except we're calling it real and I, real and imaginary. So we, we have the length. What else do we need? The angle. We need the angle. Right? This is just like changing vectors from IJ to length and angle. How do you do it? You just had the test on it yesterday. How do you find the angle? Inverse, inverse tangent, but you better draw it first, remember? Because that, so it's good that we kind of hit this one more time and reinforce that concept. Inverse tangent only gives you a reference angle. That could be in any quadrant, and you have to find the right quadrant and the actual angle, therefore. Do you know what I mean? That's why drawing it is valuable. If you just take your calculator right now and go, look, I'm just going to go tangent, uh, theta is inverse tangent. What's it going to be? Of uh, what over what? How do you know? It's normally J over I. If you just remember that, you're probably fine. That's what it was for vectors, right? J over I. So in, in this case, we're calling it B over A, whatever you want to call it. It's the Y value, minus 19, over the X value, huh? Am I losing you? How we doing? Thetas, isn't it 45 degrees? But it's not 45 degrees. That's just the reference angle. We have to find the actual angle. That's what I'm saying. If you just stop right there, you're not going to usually get the right answer. You, it's 45 degrees into one of the quadrants from the x-axis. You've got to find out which quadrant and then find the true angle. Am I making any sense? That's exactly what we had to do for vectors. So I don't know if you all caught that in the vector problems, but this is what you have to do. You have to do inverse tangent of j over i or you know, y over x. Get that, but then you've got to say, that's a reference. That's only a reference angle. I've got to find where that thing actually is. Well, how do you know where it is? Well, just, just look at this thing. Which quadrant is it in? Back 19, down 19. It's in the third quadrant. Yeah. Does everybody see it now? See how I know it's in the third quadrant? Back 19, down 19. It's in the third quadrant. Okay, here is zero right there. So how far to get all the way to my angle? This is 180. 180, and then it's past it, huh? If you're in the third quadrant, you're past 180. So it's 180 plus 45, 225 degrees. That's the angle, 225. That's how we did it for vectors. Does that make any sense? Strengthening, so because on the exam we'll have both vectors in, and these again, you'll be strong on both, right? It's the same exact process. There's theta is the inverse tangent of the y over the x, whatever you want, to, whatever they want to call the y and the x. It's always the y and the x, b and a, j and i, whatever, y over the x. Add these up, because that's you got to find the quadrant, you got to draw it in the third quadrant, which means it's more than 180. So it's 180 plus 45, 225. Now, the final way they want you to write this, though, how, do they, how can we write this out? They want you to write it. Remember what, what the I and the J want you to write? R cos theta I plus R sine theta J. They want you to actually write that out. with the R factored out. That's what they want. They want, I don't know why they want it that form. There's nothing magical. They could have not factored out the R. That's what they want. <clears throat> They're asking you, on the test it won't be a problem. It'll just be a multiple choice. You'll just look down and see the one that matches. On the homework, they, you'll have to put it in this form. And so what's our R? Our R is 19 root 2. Cosine, what's our angle? 225. And what's our... And we don't... We just write the I on the back part, actually. Don't we? Because we don't have a vector. We have a complex number. So instead of IJ, it's real imaginary. We're done. This is what they want. 19 root 2 
cosine 225 plus sine 225i. How are we doing? Is it making some sense? Questions on that? Everybody see what I'm doing there at the end? Right? Remember what we learned about ij? It's r cosine i, r sine j for vectors. So that's all I did at the very end. Let me do that one more time. I want to make sure that part, because that'll strengthen what you learned early about vectors when we take it all on the final exam. And you get that big final exam score that'll replace your third exam. You have a big score. So how does this work again? We found out the r is 19 root 2. We found out the angle was 225. Once you have those two, how do you write this? Remember, just remember back to vectors. Vectors were r cosine theta i plus r sine theta j, huh? That's how vectors were. But instead, we're now scribbling out the i, putting it on the right side, because it's a complex number. Instead of ij, it's real imaginary, OK? And we're also factoring out the r. I don't know why they suddenly decided to do that. They, they just did. They're factoring out the r. And now we plug in the r. 19 root 2. The angle, 225. And there we go. Is that making sense? See how it's the same thing? It's not anything new. I feel like if I can show you it's the same, it'll be easy to remember and strengthen both things. Everybody see that? Hey, that, that's the answer. I want to check it real quick because I think there's a valuable lesson to learn in that. If I was to take this and distribute it back in, you don't have, not required. I want to show you to go right back to this. I want to show you it's another way to say the same thing. Remember, this is one and uno. I'm saying the same number in two different languages. I'm saying it in rectangular coordinates real imaginary, and I'm saying it in r theta coordinates, right? Length, 19 root 2, theta, the angle. You turn the cannon to 225 degrees, and you fire a distance of 19 root 2, right? Where is, by the way, where is this thing? It's, oh, third, we said it, third quadrant, right? Back 19, down 19, third quadrant. It's the same thing as turning the cannon, turning the cannon 225 degrees, and shooting out a distance 19 root 2, you'll land at the same spot. Let's see it. 19 root 2 cosine 225 plus 19 root 2 sine 225i. Now what is, if you go to the unit circle, let's go to the unit circle real quick. We can find 225. We don't need our calculator. That's one of our ones right, that's right on the unit circle. I can find the unit circle. Where, oh, where did my unit circle go? There it is. 225, here it is. Here's 225. Cosine and sine of 225 are both negative root 2 over 2. They're both negative root 2 over 2. So I go, okay, this is 19 root 2 times negative root 2 over 2 plus 19 root 2 times also negative root 2 over 2. I, does everybody see that? What happens here now? What is root 2 times root? Remember, this is over 1. Any whole numbers over 1. What's root 2 root 2? Two? 2. Correct. Root 2 root 2 is plain 2. Cancels with that 2 down below, doesn't it? See how these guys cancel out that guy? And it's just minus 19. Perfect. And see what happens over here? Same thing. These two root 2's make 2. Cancel out the 2 down below. Minus 19i. That's 19 minus 19. See what I distributed? That's the same as that. See how there are two ways to say the same thing? I want to make sure you're not losing the big picture for all the details. They're one and uno, aren't they? They're saying the same thing in two different languages. They're saying, you want to, you want to find that point? You can go back 19, down 19. Or you can turn the cannon to 225 degrees and shoot a distance of 19 root 2. That's the same dot in either system, isn't it? Why are we doing all the work to change to this other system? 
because tomorrow Mr. De Moivre is going to give us an amazing theorem. We can do stuff that's super hard in the other system, super easy, very elegant, very elegantly in the new system. With the greatest of ease, we can do things that would be virtually impossible in the other system. That's why we change systems in math, because certain things are easier in some systems, certain things are easier in other systems. And we want to get things done, so we need different systems to make things easier. Is that good? You getting the hang of change in systems? Okay, so let's try that one. 4 minus 4 root 3i. What do they want you to do? Change to polar form. Change to the other system. That's rectangular form. Real imagine. Over 4, down 4 root 3i. Right, can you tell me right now what quadrant it's in? The fourth. It's going to the fourth. Yeah, can you all just picture that? It's right and down, isn't it? That's fourth quadrant. So remember that when you go to the theta is tangent inverse thing. So that you gotta, that'll be a reference angle, but it's referenced in the fourth quadrant. That's all we were doing with the vectors. Same thing. So find your R and find your theta. All right, we good on this one? This all making sense? Let's try it. So the R is the square root of A squared plus B squared the square root of 4 squared plus negative 4 root 3 squared. That's the square root of 16. Now, how do you do 4 root 3 squared? You square the 4, 16. You remove the root 3. Is that too fast? Do you see that? I squared the negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And the root of 3, it just removes the root, doesn't it? To be a plain 3, the, the square removes the root. So then you get... 16 plus 48, square root of 64, 8. Good for R? Do you get R okay? How we doing? Am I losing you? Everybody see what happened there? I did the square root of A squared plus B squared. This okay? I squared the 4 to be 16. The negative 4, negative 4 squared 16, and the, remove the root on the 3. 
that good? You don't look all that happy about that. Are you okay with that? Anything I can answer on that? So that's the R. Let's find the angle theta inverse tangent of B over A, huh? The Y over the X, whatever you want to call it. Inverse tangent of negative 4 root 3 over um, 4. Did you get, like, is it like negative 60? Oh, yeah. Negative 60 degrees. Good? So now that's, where is that? That's fourth quadrant because this is right and down. Right, four, down. So it's, it's right, four, down, four, root three. So that angle, 60 degrees, is a reference angle. You can just make it positive. That's fine. You're right. That's, that's a, a minus 60 reference angle. Remember, that's always a reference angle. So it's 60 in the fourth quadrant. So how do we say it from here all the way to there? Yeah, it's, it's all the way around back up 60. Remember, you're always adding or subtracting from the x-axis. And the x-axis is 360 on this side, 180. We're never going to use the 270 or the 90 because those are y-axis, aren't they? Those are y-axis. And we're always dealing with reference angles, which is with reference to the x-axis. So we're always coming off of 360 or 180, aren't we? Because that's to the x-axis and tangent number is always x-axis. So any of the inverse functions is x-axis, reference angle. So 360 minus 60, that's 300 degrees, isn't it? 300 degrees? Does that make sense? So we've got our R. So, so, how, so you can find this point by going right 4, down 4, root 3, or you can turn the cannon 300 degrees and shoot out a distance of 8. Same dot. You'll land at that dot, whichever system you use. That's specifying the same location. How do you write it in the final notation? They want R cos theta plus R sine theta, and we put the I in the second part, huh? Factor out the R. What is the R? It's 8 cosine 300 plus sine 300 I. There's the answer they want. That's polar form. And it's the same thing as the original ones, just being said in a different language. Are we good there? All right, we did a lot of math. What have we finished? We finished 5 1.